Senator, Madame Senator Batters, suivi de Monsieur Senator. Senator Battles, Batters, followed by Senator Carignan. Thank you both of you for being here. Um, Mr. Frum, you painted an alarming picture today um, where a, f a foreign government with bad intentions, um, some uh, a government that monitors all as much as they want to, their citizens' behavior, um, could have some real impact in the next Canadian federal election, potentially. And I would add to that scenario that that particular foreign government could also go on to organize a large number of non-resident Canadians who are now living in that non-democratic totalitarian country. They could um, present a, a very organized effort to have a real impact in a relatively small country like Canada. Um, in that sort of case, you may as well give a whole stack of ballots to that totalitarian government. And, uh, and I thought you had a very good quote when you said, choose your own governments for yourselves. That should be our purpose here in, in dealing with this particular bill and our democratic system. You also were talking about how rules are liberty enhancing, and I would add to that, I guess, um, that rules can also be and should be integrity enhancing, and I think that's what we're hopefully trying to do here. But in, with Bill C-76, um, it seems like the Canadian federal government has not completed that mission one of hardening our, our um, most basic rules that we should be in focusing on here, but instead they're blowing the door wide open on some of these areas. And so what I'd like you to comment on is, given the current global prevalence of cyber hacking, um, does it alarm you even more when I tell you that we were advised by the chief electoral officer yesterday that non resident Canadians will be able to simply apply for a ballot in this next uh, year's Canadian federal election by a, an extremely simple online process. Yeah. Well, um, I must say, um, I don't know if anyone here saw um, the monk debate I participated in with Steve Bannon, but I came away from that experience with a new enthusiasm for paper ballots. <laughs> <laughs> I love the paper ballot myself. <laughs> yes. So this will be a, still a paper ballot, but there will be an online, very yeah. simple process for a non-resident Canadian you to know, request that ballot. You, what you're going to find yourself in, and, and maybe this is an unavoidable feature, but there's going to be an arms race between democratic societies and state and non-state anti-democratic actors mm -hmm. um, who are going to, um, and who are in much more intimate contact with each other through through cyber. And we have, we have learned all of that. Um, you know, there are, um, you, you can, and I don't know that there is a, a way around it, um, and I think you may have to think about le levels of acceptable risk, but certainly if people are applying online, um, you want to have ways of um, having a real-world backup of some kind to know that the person who's in line is a, is a person, is the person they say they are, um, and is in a situation where they're operating on, um, without duress. You know, we, this, everything has been very futuristic, but um, the history, the, the past of democratic voting systems has been a, a past of freeing people from duress was a real problem. Uh, secret ballots are a comparatively new thing in the history of elections. Um, they, you know, they, they, I think they originate in Australia in about the 1870s, and they're very controversial for a long time, um, partly because there were people who wanted to um, uh, put pressure to bear on people who were economically dependent on them. Um, so that being able to vote your own conscience, your own way, without duress, that, that's a comparative, that is a recent achievement, mm -hmm. um, and it continues to be under threat, because one of the things that is characteristic of the new authoritarian governments is they do not usually do away with all of the appearance of democracy. Yes. Um, and whether it's Russia, whether it's Turkey, uh, whether it's Hungary, um, that, that uh, they, are, they, ha they have many of the aspects of democracy, and they certainly retain elections. Um, and protecting the integrity of elections as Canadians understand elections. That is, that's, a, that, that's both a challenge, but it's also a real, um, it's a, it should be a real source of, of pride and commitment. Absolutely. And also, if I could get you to comment, Mr. Frum, um, the comparison with this particular aspect of the bill has often been to, well, you know, franchises given to non-residents uh, for France, for Italy, for the U.S., but do you think that's a fair comparison? And if not, why you mean, not? You mean mutually between EU countries? No, well, perhaps that, but also for the US, like people who are um, US citizens, but perhaps maybe expat for a yeah. short time or something like that. Is that a fair comparison well, in comparing Canada? To well, I was, just, I was just reviewing this, and I think this is something that Mr. Jacob will know more about than, than me, but um, the United States imposes on its foreign 
expats a, a duty to keep registering annually mm -hmm. and to remain in very close contact with the U U.S. authorities. Um, so they have a system that is actually much more burdensome than anything that now exists in Canada. Um, I'm not as familiar with EU systems, mm -hmm. but, uh, but expatriation within the bounds of the EU is a very different thing because those countries have mutually agreed to have a new concept of voting rights for EU citizens where, as I understand it, a, you can be a French citizen and live in Italy for a long, long time and you can vote in various kinds of local elections as a French citizen because you belong to a common organization uh, with common values, common, common rules, mm -hmm. and cer certain kinds of common rights. So that obviously does not describe the Canadian situation at all. But American uh, citizens also must, in order to be able to vote, they have to be paying their taxes to the United States as well, right? Well, the United States has a system, has, has perhaps one, and this is one of the maybe deterrents to expatriation, yes. Yes. Um, that one of the reasons people expatriate is to get out from under their, um, a democracy's taxes, which are usually higher than a non-democracy's taxes. Mm -hmm. um, and from the United States' point of view, that is not going to work. Uh, that, is, that is very difficult to do. And so you have different kinds of expatriation uh, from the United States. Thank you.